Welcome everybody back to another Avid Max Fly Tying Tuesday. Brady with you once more. We're gonna tie up a bug here. Today we got the Stillwater Nymph. So this is a cool sort of a tractor fly, um, kind of put together to imitate any sort of aquatic nymph, a larger nymph can also imitate some bait fish and that kind of thing if you tie it in different color variations. Uh, it's a good option to have as our waterways start to ice off as those uh, lakes become free of ice and fishable. Got to have that still water box loaded and ready to go. So this is a good pattern to have at the ready in those situations. Uh, so like I said, this is the still water nymph. And we're going to tie it today on a folding mill hook. And this is a new addition to the Avid Max catalog, the folding mill stuff. We've been really excited to tie with them. This is the FM 17. So it's an extra long, a two X long standard nymph hook long uh, shank there, and then it has a bar built in. Pretty traditional styling overall with that down eye on it as well. And today we're also featuring a product that we just added in. Uh, most of you are probably pretty familiar with it, but it's the Norvice. So it's a, a cool, very uniquely designed vise with a very, very smooth rotary. Definitely stands alone as far as vices go. Um, not many like it. So it's a cool new product. You can check them out on Avid Max. Uh, but let's get down to tying some bugs here. So the first thing we're gonna use is our thread. Obviously, we're gonna start with the UTC 70 in brown for this guy. And that's just to kind of finish the head off. That's gonna be the color that we want for this particular bug. So we'll quickly dress our hook shank there and walk it right on back to where we're going to tie in our first material besides the thread and that will be some marabou just using some strung marabou today i really like the strung marabou because it's a nice long feather compared to some of the woolly bugger maraboos and other things like that uh, and it's a two-tone tail on this bug so we're going to use some brown and then i'm also going to use a little bit of olive and we'll use two colors but it'll be a fairly sparsely tied tail overall so select our feather off of the strong here find one good one out of each pile and then we're going to strip it down so you got the whole marabou feather you can use the sides of it uh, right off of the side here. I tend to strip them down pretty good and then use the tips, just get a nice consistent tip. So we'll peel some of this back. And like I said, I'm gonna actually take most of it away and leave a fairly sparse amount. And we'll do the same with the brown, just like we did with the olive there. And you can be somewhat picky Natural materials, you always are gonna end up with a good bit of waste. You can be a little bit more disciplined than I am and have it go a little bit longer way, but you can also be very picky and your fly will definitely resemble that when it's done. So now we got our brown and our olive here, ready to go. I tie them in one at a time, you could tie them in together, whatever works best for you. Actually take a little bit more off of that. There we go. So measuring the hook shank and we'll transfer that into the back and secure it down. Go over one, walk back on it with a couple of wraps. That'll keep it nicely secured. And then we can use this to build a little bit of a body to this fly. And we can go most of the ways up to the hook eye. We're gonna leave ourselves just a little bit of room behind the eye to finish her off. So now that we got the brown there, we will add in the olive. Gives it a nice two-tone, similar to like a thin mint coloration. And you can definitely play around with this in various colors lighter, darker, whatever seems to be the right match for the insects that 
you see in your water that being the inevitable goals that you're trying to match those bugs whether they be large calabatus dragonfly nymphs you know time in black imitate some leeches all that good stuff and we'll just dress it a little bit clean it up for our next couple of stages here I got that fixed nice and tight. There we go. Uh, the next material being our ribbing. So I have some tinsel here. This is the French tinsel in gold, the small size. I really like French tinsel. If you've seen me tying in the past, I tend to use it on a fair bit of bugs. I just like the modeling, the shimmer. It's an overall really solid material, very classic material. And we'll leave that hanging out the back there for our next material, which is the backing to this. And that'll be some mallard flank. If you got wood duck at home, that works well also. Uh, just a nice long duck feather here. And I'm gonna strip off probably 20, 25 of these from the stem and prepare to tie those in. And I like to trim the tips off just to give myself a nice even tie-in point there. And we're going to tie it in right at the back because I want to make sure that I leave enough room to fold this all over the, the front of the, the hook shank, all over through the top of that, that hook shank, the full length. So just quickly secure that into place. And then on to the next material, which is some peacock curl. And on this one, I like to stay fairly natural, but you can substitute ice dubbing, uh, chenilles. There's a lot of good options out there for kind of this body wrap. Uh, and in this situation, I'm gonna use a few strands of peacock hurl, you know, five or six of them. And we'll end up roping these all together. So same thing, trim them even so that we got a nice consistent tie-in point here. And it also helps them be a little bit more durable further down than they are at the tips, which is nice. So secure that right on the side, walk our thread up, just sort of even out our thread base slightly, and then we can hang our thread out up front. Again, just about a hook eyes back for when we go to finish this. And we can toss this in the bobbin cradle. One of the cool things about the Norvice, if you're using it with all of the, the Norvice products, is their automatic bobbins. So since the bobbin cradle's a quite, quite a bit ways away, um, that's a really awesome feature that they developed is the automatic bobbin. So it'll help you return your thread to tying position nice and quickly after using the rotary. So once we have that peacock curl roped up real good, we're just gonna wrap it straight forward. And the rotary on this vise is super, super smooth. It's actually more smooth than I'm used to, which is a little bit different, but I know there's a lot of value for certain tires and, and their methodology of tying. So very cool design. One more wrap there before we capture it with our thread. Just make sure that's nice and secured there before we clip those butt ends out. And then we're gonna bring in some hackle. So we're gonna use just a regular dry fly hackle here. Get myself prepared to tie it in. Uh, so I have this whiting cape in brown. Whiting, obviously a great manufacturer of the highest grade uh, hackle feathers that you can find out there, whether it be capes or saddles. But I'm using a cape today and I'm just gonna find a true to gauge size. You can oversize it a little bit on this bug too because it is a wet fly. So it's really just to add bugginess. Not meant uh, for buoyancy like it would be on a dry fly. So we'll just grab and measure that real quick. Yeah, it looks to be about the right size, nice and webby. 
do the coloration. So we'll prep our feather for tying. So I clipped off the end and I'm just gonna trim some of these barbels to give myself a nice tying point there. We'll bring our bobbin up and tie that in. Couple of wraps and I always like to come behind and in front one time and that just helps me feel confident that it's not going anywhere. And then we can trim out that extra bit of stem there. It's like I clipped my thread a little bit. So let's make sure that that's all secure before moving on. Caught it just in time before it unraveled on me. There we go. So same thing, we'll half hitch. And then we can take that hackle rearward. So very wide open wraps on this. Don't need too many, just a few as we're going back right to the rear of the hook where our tinsel is waiting for us. So this is the traditional way you would wrap a, a dry fly hackle. We're gonna capture that with our tinsel and then we can wrap that forward to help secure that in place. We'll just sort of wiggle through those barbels until we get back to the front end. And we can tie that off. and clip out the excess of the tinsel as well as that little bit of hackle hanging out. And one of our final steps here is just to pull this wood duck over the top. I'm gonna to make a little room and trim out the hackle on top. So we can pull that over. I always kind of just run my hand on it, sort of get it to flatten out nicely. Right on top there. Before capturing it down. With a few locking wraps here. Clipping out that excess. And then we're gonna build a quick thread head on this bad boy. Great Stillwater Nymph, I, you know, that's the name, Stillwater Nymph. Just a cool pattern overall too. I think this, if, you know, you could fish it like a bugger in a lot of situations, not far off of the build of a bugger. Um, but I like just the elegance of it overall. Um, sort of a, kind of a traditional sort of looking wet fly, um, but holds a lot of value in those lakes where you have some bigger bugs that might be moving around. It's a good one to have. And again, you can tie this olive green combo. You can do it in brown, do it in like a tanner like Cahill maybe even. And of course, black is always a good color choice. And right now I'm just finishing off the head with a little bit of zap a gap. Uh, if you wanted more of a, like a clear finish, you could always do some hard head UV as well. Works. Zap a gap's just kind of down and dirty for me. Make sure that everything's nice and, and fixed, not gonna come loose um, and really holds up great in the long run. So that's the Stillwater Nymph. It's a great fly. Fill your, your Stillwater boxes with it and go out and catch some big fish on it. Thanks for watching.